Eduard have a reputation for making some really high quality kits, and even in the smaller scales this seems to be the case. Hello everyone, I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and join me today as I build and review the MiG-15 in 1 to 144th scale from Eduard. I've not actually done an unboxing video on this particular kit, partly because it's quite small and there's not that much to it, but also because I was really excited to just start it. So let's take a quick look at what we get inside this bag. The instructions come as a little glossy booklet and the exploded diagrams seem reasonably easy to follow. The painting and decal placement instructions are printed in full colour and do give some information about the aircraft, which is quite nice to see. A small decal sheet is included, which contains some reasonably well printed transfers for the four different schemes included in the kit. There's also a very tiny canopy mask sheet. This does contain the canopy masks and some masks for the wheels, but I'll probably only end up using the one for the canopy. The only clear part in this kit is the cockpit canopy, and there are two sprues of dark grey plastic containing the rest of the parts, which are all moulded to a very high quality and I couldn't see any flash on the examples I had here today. It's a testament to the designers and the toolmakers over at Eduard for their attention to detail at how small some of these parts really are. With that out of the way, I'll put a list of the products I used during the build on the screen now to give you an idea of the kind of things you might want to go and get if you fancy having a go at this one for yourself. Without any further ado though, let's get straight on with the build. I'll snip the parts very carefully from the sprue using my side cutters and then sand down any rough areas with a sanding pad. There isn't any flash to speak of in this kit, so that's one less step to worry about. I'm going to be using Humbrol Liquid Poly as my cement of choice in this build. It may not be the best product out there, but it does the job. Here I'm gluing the front air intake onto the cockpit component. It is worth noting that this only goes one way, so I made sure that I'd actually glued in the correct way. It won't fit inside the fuselage if you have it facing the other way. Because I have a track record of tail sitting aircraft, I decided I'd use some liquid gravity on this particular kit. There isn't much space inside the model to put some of this weight, but there are some cavities on the front air intake. So I filled these on both the upper and lower sides with this liquid gravity and then glued it into place with some drops of super glue. I had to make sure though that these little metal beads wouldn't overspill the edges and prevent the fuselage from joining up. According to the instructions, the interior of the cockpit should be a grey colour, so I'm using this SMS Surfacer Grey Primer as that paint colour. This is lacquer based, airbrush ready and sprays straight through the airbrush with no difficulties. It's really fast drying too. When that was dry after only a few minutes, this Vallejo black acrylic paint was carefully applied to the pilot's seat, the control column and also the control panel. I'm going to use Humbrol Decal Fix as my setting solution for the decals that need to go inside of the cockpit. We have some seat belts which get applied to the chair and also one for the control panel. The decal fix should help soften them down and glue them onto the surface of the plastic. Whilst those transfers were drying, I decided to crack on with the upper part of the aircraft. The tail gets glued into its holes on the back of the plane and the horizontal surfaces get glued in their little holes at the top of the tail. Everything in this kit fits pretty well together, so I didn't have any issues here. One thing perhaps is maybe the parts are incredibly small, so it was quite a fiddly build. Having just done the engine exhaust, I moved onto the lower side of the aircraft and glue in the front landing gear. It has to be glued in at this point because this is the only way it fits in. I'm pretty sure you can display the landing gear raised if you wanted to, but it doesn't make any reference of this in the kit, but I imagine it would be just gluing the doors in the closed position. Having just glued into place the main guns, I then glued the doors into their open position. 
With that done, I glued the cockpit and internal nose area inside the front of the plane and then joined the two fuselage halves together. Here there is an aerial mast which goes on the right hand side of the cockpit and a small little probe thing that goes at the back. But full disclosure, I did lose these parts a number of times and had to replace them with some stretch sprue. The canopy masks are a great inclusion because they make this step easier. Although easier might be the wrong word because it's still incredibly fiddly given how small these parts are. Having carefully stuck on all of the canopy masks, some humbral clear fix was carefully applied onto the bottom of the canopy and then this was glued into place on the top of the aircraft. Hopefully the glue should dry clear and strong without reacting with the plastic. I've decided I'm going to glue on the majority of the rest of the parts now because the bond will be stronger. So here I'm gluing the pylons for the underwing fuel tanks into position on the bottom of the wings. When this was done, the underwing fuel tanks, they come in two parts, they've been glued together and then they were glued onto these pylons. The landing gear legs get glued onto their relevant doors and then before adding them onto the bottom of the aircraft, I decided to glue into place the other gear door which goes at the side closest to the fuselage. As mentioned, everything is well designed and has good locating positions. However, the parts are just that small. It's such a fiddly step. With the landing gear leg now installed, there is a tiny little part of the door which also needs to be added here in this position. Again, another fiddly step. The only thing left to glue on is the main wheels and I'll do that after they've been painted. And speaking of painting, let's get some onto the aircraft. I'm using this Humbrol Metal Coat Polished Aluminium as the overall color for the aircraft. And this was simply sprayed over everything, including the wheels, which are still yet to be added to the model. I then masked the aircraft so that I could have the air display blue stripes for this particular paint scheme that I'd chosen depicted on the wings. To do this, I've mixed up some Humbrol Matte 25 and some acrylic thinner in my airbrush at a rough ratio of about two parts paint to one part thinner, and then carefully applied it to those areas. The nose and air intake would also need this painting on in a band around the nose and just on the front of the intake. I thought that would be too difficult to mask an airbrush, so I simply did this with a very fine brush and by hand to get the desired result that I was looking for. Vallejo Gunmetal was the next paint that I used and this was carefully applied to the barrels of the main cannons on the nose of the aircraft and also on the engine exhaust at the rear. I would then thin this down with some acrylic thinners and use this very thin paint to add some highlight to various panels to make them look as though perhaps they are different parts, made out of a different material or have had some work done on them. I think the last time I used this kind of technique was on an Airfix P51 that I did in Royal New Zealand Air Force colours and I quite liked how that came out so it was good to have the chance to replicate it again here. This Humbrol number 164 dark sea grey was then applied to the landing gear bays, the internal edges of the doors and the landing gear legs. According to the instructions this area should be painted grey and that's just what I did with it. I'd also use it on the hubs of the wheels. I don't need to use the masks because I'm using a very fine brush and when that was dry I applied the Vallejo black from before to the tires of the wheels, taking care to avoid the previously painted grey. When that paint was dry, the wheels were carefully glued onto the landing gear legs. In preparation for applying the transfers, I'm going to apply this SMS clear gloss over the entire aircraft. This was simply sprayed over the entire model, doing some repeated coats and then being left to dry. Now moving on to the decals, I'm going to be using Microset and Microsol in this particular part of the build. First up, I'm going to use the Microset from the blue bottle and then when the transfers are down, the red bottle will make an appearance. But first I need to soak the transfers in some warm water to help release them from the backing paper. I have cut them into more manageable parts, correctly identifying the relevant transfers that I need for my particular paint scheme. Having dipped them into warm water and allowing that to do its magic to release from the backing paper, after the micro set was applied, the transfers were carefully slid into position. 
The decals are printed to a reasonable quality, however I think that they are the part of this kit that does let the build down slightly. The printing isn't as fine as other companies and I'm pretty sure the resolution isn't that great so you can kind of see the uh, dots where the printing has gone down. Additionally, I did experience a little bit of tearing on one of the blue lightning bolts on the side of the aircraft. With that done though, and the decals now cured, the SMS Premium Clear Gloss makes a reappearance and was applied over the entire aircraft to help seal those transfers in, protect them for the next steps of weathering, and also give a more uniform finish. Ravel number no. 9, which is an anthracite grey, and this is the enamel version of the paint, was then thinned down with some white spirit to make a very thin wash. This wash was applied over the entire aircraft, and it should sink down into all of those panel lines and details. Once that was done, I would go back over the top with a cotton bud soaked in some white spirit to help remove the excess wash and bring back some of the shine, but leave the dirt and grime in all of those recessed details. Not too happy with the cotton buds I used here though, they were a bit cheap and they did leave some strands and fibres on the model which needed cleaning up. When that was done, the canopy masks were carefully peeled away to reveal the relatively good job that they've done. And finally, the last step in this build is to add a little bit of aerial wire. I'm going to use this ultra thin Ushi rig that thing rigging wire, and it was super glued onto the top of the tail in the correct position. And then a little more glue was applied to the top of the aerial mast, and it was carefully stretched over the aerial mast until the glue dried and then the excess rigging wire would be cut off. And that's as far as I went with my build of the Eduard 1 to 144th scale MiG-15. Well, not bad for about eight hours of work on and off over a Sunday afternoon. I'm pretty pleased with how this one looks. I think that it's no surprise that Eduard have done a very good job of designing this kit and all the parts fit together really well, are very nicely molded and the inclusion of canopy masks are extra value to the kit. Naturally being so small, the main challenge I found was that the parts were tiny and incredibly fiddly, which probably took up most of my time in just getting things in the right place. Having used those SMS lacquers, which are very fast drying, that helped to keep the time spent on this project down. So let's talk a little bit about this kit then. This kit was originally tooled back in 2014, so it's only about a decade old and I think that shows in the quality of the model. It has been released a number of times since then, but the version I have here is a 2020 edition. Retailing here in the UK for between £10 and £11, that's actually really good value for this kit, considering the fact that you get a number of sprues of very high quality parts, four different decal schemes and included paint masks, that's a lot of bang for your buck. The only area that I feel lets this kit down was in those transfers. Whilst they are completely acceptable and usable, the printing isn't as fine as those from other manufacturers and I did experience some tears on one of the blue lightning bolts on the side of the aircraft. The blue I picked for my particular aircraft isn't quite the right shade to match the one on the transfer but it looks okay and I'm quite happy with how it's turned out in the end. The only other thing probably worth mentioning is those tiny little aerial masts on the top. I did lose them a number of times and had to manufacture my own probably about three or four times because I kept losing them, but that's more my fault and not a real reflection on the model. One small thing I found a little bit annoying was that in the instructions you do have the options of different parts for different variants of the aircraft. You're told that there is an option but not why it's an option and I feel like that extra bit of information would go some way to help the modeler make an informed choice. But that's only a minor grievance and I just picked the right drop tanks based on what I could see on historical images online. I think though it's probably time to wrap this one up here. 
This is a very well designed kit which features a wealth of detail despite its small scale. Benefiting from some great value features such as four paint schemes, included masks, this makes a great budget weekend build. Let me know what you think of my build down in the comments and if you've got any other suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover. As always, quick shout out to my channel members and patrons for the extra support they give the channel. Massive thanks to these guys on screen. If you'd like to join them, take a look at the links in the description to find out how. Down in the description box, you'll also find other ways to help support the channel if you'd like to do so. However, the best way to support this channel for free is by subscribing and turning those notifications on so you never miss a modeling upload. Finally though, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.